I believe certain demons have come into America through this new group of people coming in from Haiti and from all these countries, bringing their devils with them. And now an HLN exclusive. Pastor Benny Hinn preaches to hundreds of thousands around the world. He extols the virtues of the prosperity gospel. Be a good Christian, support Hinn's ministry, and your financial problems will disappear. For over 30 years, one man has continued to raise the bulk of people's expectations high, wielding so much influence in the Christian community with tons of published books, audio and video messages, as well as online streamings across several platforms. I bet not one of you today would want to cast a stone or ever suspect that there is a loophole in his teachings. But I have closely followed Benny Hinn's doctrines for half that time, and so has everyone else who has, at one time or the other, suspected that his healings and supernatural miracles are just too good to be true. In this video, I will discuss a very sizzling revelation from Mike Winger, who has been closely following Benny Hinn and his ministry for years. And beware, these mind-boggling revelations could send this respected preacher to jail. Multi-millionaire Benny Hinn intends to sue Mike Winger, a Christian YouTuber, for revealing alarming secrets about him in a four-hour video. The video reveals that Hinn has been dishonest, preying on the vulnerable, and exploiting the sick and poor through his healing concerts, prophetic encounters, word of faith miracles, and prosperity ministry, often labeled as name it and claim it, and this he has done over the past 30 years. Do not forget that we have extensively covered some grimy aspects of Benny Hinn's 30 years of spiritual deception on this channel. Mike Winger's revelations make it even more intense, proving that many people are starting to realize how many have been victimized by this man's teachings. Benny Hinn has been accused of harming people, leaving them in poverty, and using the sick and ill as props for self-glorification and deceit. It is believed that only God can speak things into existence, a power humans do not possess. Aside from weird antics towards the gospel, Benny Hinn is reputed for his intimidation tactics, particularly against those who challenge his alleged healings and spiritual schemes. This is why he targeted Mike Winger's video, which illustrates his healing antics in the 1990s, a trait he still maintains to this day. Hinn is accused of employing scare tactics and what some call spiritual intimidation, such as misusing biblical curses to silence and instill fear in those who might criticize him for wrongdoing or falsehoods. Hinn's character is questioned, especially in light of his comments about John MacArthur, who criticized Hinn's healings, biblical practices, and doctrinal teachings. On TBN, when asked about MacArthur, Hinn allegedly said he would like to use a Holy Ghost machine gun on him. But don't mention people's names on your radio program and your TV program thinking you're doing God's service. You're not. You stink, frankly. That's the way I think about it. Sometimes I wish God, sometimes I wish God give me a Holy Ghost machine gun, I'll blow your head off. It is true that humans continue to search for a biblical verse that justifies their untoward ways and puts them in a positive light before men. But what about putting them in a positive light before God? They don't quite see that this is a fruitless venture. Despite this, those who follow such controversial figures are fond of criticizing those who point out their errors. Benny Hinn is seen as a deceptive preacher, which even the Bible likens to a wolf in sheep's clothing. He is known for claiming to perform miracles, such as supposedly healing boxer Evander Holyfield's heart condition, the same boxer whose ear was bitten by Mike Tyson. Hinn is also known for slaying people in the spirit, a well-known practice, and for self-identifying as an apostle and evangelist, claiming to have led many to Christ. With Mike Winger's latest video and all the unsavory revelations swarming around Benny Hinn and his methods, in a just world, the evidence presented could lead to his imprisonment. Winger's four-hour video provides such proof, exposing Hinn's lies and scams, with Hinn's own words and actions serving as testimony against him. To give, and I mean give, over a thousand dollars for me. God cannot trust you with the wealth of sinners and the abundance coming with your ten dollar donation. Pantheistic perspective that has been turned into a spiritual Ponzi scheme, making the people at the top of the food chain rich, preying on the desires, the material, worldly desires of the people who want all this stuff. Comes under the name the Word of Faith Movement, Prosperity Gospel, name it and claim it. It's being advocated by people like Benny Hinn, Marilyn Hickey, Frederick Price, Joyce Meyer, Kenneth Copeland, 
Kenneth Hagin, Robert Tilton, a man named Kuntz, Oral Roberts, Paul Crouch, on and on and on. Perhaps Mike Winger, our previous videos on Benny Hinn, and those of other channels were not clear enough. Let's listen to Benny Hinn's nephew, Costi Hinn, and his remarkable testimony. This testimony is about how Costi was delivered from the prosperity gospel and the exploitation of the vulnerable by his uncle, Benny Hinn. His story is quite compelling, and we plan to share more of it with you later. Well, with some twisted theology, and if you take the Bible and you take what Jesus taught, and you take some of the promises of heaven and the riches of heaven and the wonderful glories of heaven, and you make them a now thing, then you really have a model for your best life now. And that's really not the heartbeat of Christianity. The heartbeat of Christianity is, if you have wealth, you want to be generous and rich in good works. Asking for large sums of money under the guise of serving God or God's work is, in essence, nothing short of a scam. The belief behind such a scheme is that by so doing, the sower is exercising reckless faith that can move mountains, and when God observes such faith in action, He blesses and multiplies the seed. But the issue arises with Benny Hinn's claims of performing miracles to make good his ministry, which is already known for poor theology and misinterpretation of Scripture. The rapid spread of this kind of teaching, otherwise known as the Word of Faith movement, is attributed to its false promises of success, health, and wealth creating an illusion that is now obviously collapsing. This is evident as Benny Hinn's attempts to take down the comprehensive four-hour-long documentary by Mike Winger, which exposed him, have failed miserably. It appears that Benny Hinn has outperformed and outplayed his hand, making all efforts to evade accountability for his actions. For years, all that was required of him was to repent and abandon these practices. But you see, when someone accumulates millions of dollars by exploiting the poor and the sick, returning such gains becomes a challenging task unless that person has genuinely and wholeheartedly repented. So what then happens in the absence of true repentance? Behold, the answer to that question is what is playing out now. Such a person succumbs to attempts to fabricate lies, shift the blame onto others, and erase video evidence, all in a desperate bid to conceal the truth and pretend none of the accusations ever occurred. The claim of healing at a Benny Hinn crusade has always been controversial. Part of the revelations in Winger's video is that individuals are not allowed on stage during the crusades unless they have confessed to experiencing healing. Mike Winger talks a lot about this, explaining that congregants cannot simply approach Hinn for healing on stage. They must already be healed and made to have a very convincing healing story. If not, getting to meet the man of God or to the stage will be denied, and any video evidence showing such a congregant will be omitted from the Crusades broadcast. A story was told of how Benny Hinn prevented a visibly unhealed woman from accessing the stage, insisting that healing must occur before she could appear. Like the majority of others, I am concerned about the authenticity of Hinn's healings and the narrative he often presents to the public. As usual, let us compare that very instance with what is found in the Bible, for this is what we use to draw the line against all false practices. Let's look at Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 48, where a woman with a bleeding condition believed that if she could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. Contrary to this narrative, imagine if Jesus had responded the same way Benny does by saying, no, no, the Lord is the healer, not me. Don't let her come to me. Hey, lady, go back to the crowd, get healed first, and then come up so I can perform some theatrical acts and broadcast it on TV. The lady would have died in that condition. And even worse, she would die an unbeliever because the person she had hoped on wouldn't even let her come close to him. Please, in case this is your first time on this channel, I invite you to subscribe and click the bell button to receive notifications every time a new video is out. Let's continue. I have a great responsibility. On the flip side, if you're poor, God still loves you. He still has a purpose and plan for you. And in your poverty, he's still with you. And the hope of heaven is much greater than the riches of now and the temporary pleasures. So you twist that and you get the prosperity. God. Similarly, Costi Hinn had more than enough to share as he continued in the Arai revelations. During Benny Hinn's miracle crusades, Costi would assist people who fell under what Benny Hinn describes as the power of God. In this live interview with HLN, Costi denounces his uncle's prosperity gospel as a false doctrine with its promises of blessings, health, wealth, 
and prosperity in return for monetary donations. Kosti Hin disclosed that the donations from supporters and the impoverished were used to fund an extravagant lifestyle. This lifestyle, built on the sacrifices of the sick and poor, relies heavily on donations for its sustenance. Benny Hinn's teachings make him like a wolf in sheep's clothing, whose influence needs to be curtailed. This is because, despite amassing millions of dollars, the donors to his ministry remain impoverished and afflicted with illnesses. This is an ugly contrast between the promises made and the reality experienced by the followers. Remember when people sought Jesus merely for the healing of their physical ailments? He would often distance himself from the crowd. A memorable event happened in the book of Mark 1 verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Everyone was looking for Jesus, but after his time in prayer, he told his disciples that it was time for them to move on to another village. Jesus' compassion for those who suffer is undeniable, as evidenced by his healing acts during his time on earth. However, the Gospel of Mark clarifies his priorities. Spiritual well-being is paramount, even over physical healing. This is illustrated by his teaching that one should rid himself of anything that leads to sin, even if it means losing a part of oneself. The message is clear. While physical healing is necessary, the soul's salvation is paramount. May the God of all grace grant you wisdom and discernment. In Jesus' name, amen.